Welcome to 5-Minute Finance, where we help you understand complex financial concepts and news in just five minutes or less. I'm Larry Mendrink, Certified Financial Planner, Accredited Investment Fiduciary, and Founder of Park Lake Advisors. It's just all over the news today. I'm going to be discussing with you FDIC insurance on bank accounts and how it works. First, let's talk about what FDIC insurance is. The FDIC, or Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, is an independent agency created by Congress in 1933 to maintain stability and public confidence in the nation's financial system. FDIC insurance provides protection for depositors in the event that a bank fails. In other words, if your bank were to go bank bankrupt or become insolvent, the FDIC would step in to protect your deposits. Now, let's dive into the details of how accounts are titled and how that affects your FDIC insurance coverage. Keep in mind that there are measures that have been and will be put in place as I speak, so there may be a temporary or permanent change to what I'm going to talk with you about today. Notwithstanding those changes that are being made to help stem any runs on the bank, the basic coverage limit for FDIC insurance is $250,000 per depositor per insured bank for each account ownership category. But did you know there are ways to structure your accounts to qualify for even more FDIC insurance protection? Let's start with single accounts. A single account is an account in one person's name. This could be a checking, savings, or even a money market account. The maximum coverage limit for a single account is $250,000. Next, we have joint accounts. A joint account is an account in the names of two or more people. The maximum coverage limit for a joint account is also $250,000 per depositor per insured bank. So if you have a joint account with your spouse, you can each qualify for up to $250,000 of FDIC insurance coverage for a total of a half a million dollars of coverage. Moving on to revocable trusts. Revocable trust accounts are accounts held in trust for one or more beneficiaries, and the depositor retains the right to revoke or change the trust at any time. The maximum coverage limit for a revocable trust account is $250,000 per beneficiary. For revocable trust accounts with three beneficiaries, you can potentially qualify for up to $750,000 in FDIC insurance coverage. Next, we have irre irrevocable trust accounts. Irrevocable trust accounts are similar to revocable trust accounts, but the depositor can't revoke or change the trust. The maximum coverage limit for a revo irrevocable trust account is also $250,000 per beneficiary. Finally, we have employee benefit plan accounts. Employee be benefit plan accounts are accounts held by employers for employee benefit plans, such as a pension plan. The maximum coverage limit for employee benefit accounts is $250,000 per participant. Now, it's important to note that each of, these, each of these categories qualifies for separate FDIC insurance coverage. So if you have multiple accounts in different ownership categories, you can potentially have millions of dollars of coverage at one bank. However, Simply adding another name to an account does not automatically double your FDIC insurance coverage. You need to make sure that the account is titled properly and fits into one of the FDIC's recognized ownership categories. FDIC insurance is a vital tool for protecting your deposits in the event that your bank does fail. Presuming that there isn't a massive permanent change to the amounts protected by structuring your accounts in different ownership categories, you can potentially qualify for more FDIC insurance coverage. Just remember to make sure your accounts are titled correctly and fit into one of the recognized ownership categories. That's all for today's episode of 5-Minute Finance. I hope you found the episode informative as well as helpful. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to email us at info at or phone 517 887 9905. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay up to date on the latest financial news and follow us on social media platforms such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube for more quick financial bites. Thank you for listening. And until next time, happy learning.